do not want to and do not intend to trade Brandon Ayuk, despite the fact that he has asked the team officially to move on from him. And really what this comes down to is there is a disagreement on his value. The wide receiver market this offseason has shifted in front of everybody's eyes. If you look at all the wide receiver deals that have gotten done and the average annual salaries paid to wide receivers, you will see that the number has grown very much and very quickly to the point where what the Niners are offering Brandon Ayuk isn't in there. The top guy right now, Justin Jefferson, at about $35 million. You have other wide receivers on that list, like A.J. Brown. You have Devontae Smith getting done at about 26 and a half. De Jalen Waddell, 28. There are some of the numbers that you're looking at. So the idea here is, where do you slot in Brandon Ayuk on this chart? And I think all these receivers in the Niners' minds would be north of what Brandon Ayuk should be paid right now when Devontae Smith is below them at about $26.5 million. Plus, Brandon Ayuk has one year left on his deal. The Niners can tag him after that particular time. And so they have his contractual rights for at least this season and more if they opt to use it that way. Yeah, there's definitely no reason or rather no incentive for John Lynch to move him, especially considering where this team sits in terms of its competitive position in the NFC. I mean, why would you get off of a guy who's averaging over 17 yards per reception and over 80% of his catches either result in a touchdown or a first down? Why would you want to trade that kind of guy? You wouldn't want to trade him. Now, would you try and work out a deal with him? Of course you would. But here, here is the problem, as Adam just articulated. When you, look at, when you look at the offense in San Francisco and all the different uh, people that they have that they try and spread the ball out to and the different various ways in which they attack, he doesn't represent an inordinate amount of the firepower on that offense. It, it isn't just run through Brandon Ayuk and then everyone else picks up scraps. They have tons of different guys that they can attack with. Therefore, if you're John Litz, you're sitting there going, well, if he only accounts for a certain percentage of our production, albeit very, very important, very important, especially to our young quarterback. If he is not carrying the weight the same way a Justin Jefferson or a C.D. Lamb is, why would we go north of $34, $35 million per year for this wide receiver right now? And I'm sure Ayuk is going, if I got the same number of targets that Justin Jefferson got, I'd put up bigger numbers than him. Because look at what I'm doing with the little bit that I do get. So I understand the trade-off, but if you're John Lynch, you hold all the cards. I think their silence speaks volumes, and I think Brandon Ayuk is listening because of what, just what you said, Lewis. Their offense doesn't run through him, and he's valuing himself as a $30 million receiver, and the 49ers are saying, wait, our offense is not predicated on you. Our offense is not built around you. Yes, you are a valuable part, but you are not a $30 million receiver worth in this offense. And I think Brandon Ayuk sees the, the writing on the wall is that the 49ers most likely want him to play this year on the last year of that deal, they drafted Ricky Pearsall, and they're going to let Brandon Ayuk walk. And I think that's the thing that he mm -hmm. sees. And he's saying, hold up. You want me to give you another year of service, then you're going to let me walk. So why would I do that? That's why he wants to trade now. Very similar, although the situation is not the same. Let's look at T. Higgins. T. Higgins knows they're not going to pay Jamar Chase and, play him, and, and pay him. So he's like, why would I give you another year? Here's the only difference. T. Higgins has a franchise tag. He's getting a mm -hmm. bigger number than Brandon Ayuk is getting right now. And so T is saying, okay, what am I going to do? I can either accept this huge franchise tag number or I cannot come in. And he chose to accept, I think the number's 20 million or whatever, where Brandon Ayuk is saying, I don't want this $14 million. Mm -hmm. I don't want that number. What I want to do is go somewhere where I can get some of this guaranteed money that A.J. Brown, that Devontae Smith, that all these other guys are getting. Yes, the 49ers may want to negotiate with him at a lower number, but they, they do not value him as a $30 million receiver. And I think he sees that and he's saying, why would I give you my year of service when you're going to let me walk? And Booger, it comes back to the collective bargaining agreement. Brandon Ayuk was a first round draft pick where there was a fifth year option at the 49ers exercised on Brandon Ayuk. This is the fifth year for $14 million. T. Higgins was a second-round draft pick. The deals are for four years. He got franchised after that was up. And so essentially, he's playing on a franchise tag. So in this particular case, being a second-round pick was more beneficial to T. Higgins than being a first-round pick was 
to Brandon Ayuk. That's the CBA, and those are the rules right now. And by the way, let's look at the way this team does business. Remember a couple of years ago, it was Debo Samuel saying, I want a trade. And of course, we all know that late in that offseason, he got a new deal. They did the same thing with Robbie Gold. So we shall see. So Yeah, but that's a different situation. It's a different team at this point, and they're at a different stage in their championship level development right like it's it's the the runway is different they're just at different stages in that so you can't necessarily compare that. people keep doing that this is what the 49ers do no that's what the 49ers did again at a very specific time in their championship building roster so it's just it's just a different situation than what they did with Debo now the, the the interesting thing is is I was talking to people in the comments where they said that Ayuk doesn't have any leverage and I disagree with that because I know even if he sits out, it kind of like this year is like almost like it doesn't happen that like pretty much the 49ers still own uh, the rights to him and the, and the you know, uh, the, the contract, uh, you know, it still just kind of gets like delayed. So it's not like he gets to sit out this year and then gets to just walk. Right. That's not the way it works. Um, and that's all well and good. But the 49ers have real championship hopes, real championship hopes. And they're not going to get the best out of Ayuk. If he if he ends up being forced to play, they are not going to get the best out of Ayuk. There's, there's just no way. There's no way, no way, no way. He's obviously proving to be on the more selfish side. Now, again, I want to emphasize, by all means, get your money and take care of yourself. I get that. But the way how this is all ha being handled is just not good. It's bad business. It's been ugly from the beginning. It's just there's just no question about it. The whole post and videos and saying they don't want me and and, you know, trying to get to Jaden with with the commanders. It's just been bad business all around. So if you really think that he doesn't get his deal and he's going to be forced to play for the 49ers, you think he's going to be a good soldier? You think he's going to be a great teammate? Absolutely, positively not. OK, he clearly doesn't have Super Bowl in his mind because if he did, he would he would take maybe a more friendlier deal. Or he would say, okay, you know what? I will play with you guys this one more year. I'm going to ball out, and then I'm going to get paid. So obviously, he's not willing to kind of make any type of sacrifice in, in, in service of winning a championship. So you're going to have some issues. Then again, not to mention, if he does play, one, I don't think he needs to ball out to get that top dollar that he wants. Because I think teams around will understand the situation to a degree. That if they, are, if they really want Ayuk or they or they're, or they're really desperate for a great wide receiver they'll be willing to pay for Ayuk whether he has a career year this coming season or not they'll understand he was unhappy he's going to be happy with us or they're going to understand there's a lot of mouths to feed in with the in San Francisco so of course his numbers aren't going to be as great like if people if the NFL as a whole accepts and, re and and acknowledges that Ayuk is a top level receiver then then he will get that money regardless if the NFL reaches a conclusion hey you're overselling yourself you're great but hey this is a great system there's other weapons yada 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 well then it really again it doesn't matter what he does this coming season whether he balls out or not like I just don't think you're going to be moving that needle or convincing anyone one way or the other in that regard so it's just it's interesting because and because of that Ayuk now has leverage. He does not need to ball out. He does not need the 49ers. So he can just show up, collect his money, and just be kind of a jerk, honestly, and kind of roll his eyes every five seconds. And if he's not getting his numbers, like he can be totally disengaged throughout the season. And the 49ers don't want that and can't afford to have that. Not to mention, if they do trade him, they will get a first round pick for him. And that can really matter. That can really matter for them, it's, it, depending, especially if they're looking at their team as having another two, three, four year window for winning a Super Bowl. That first round pick can be huge. That can really help with that. They can either make moves with that. They can draft some, you know, it's just it's that's a, it, that just gives them more options. So I think Ayuk has a lot more leverage than people realize, because it's one thing if the 49ers didn't have true Super Bowl aspirations right let's say they were the dallas cowboys and this isn't meant to be like a knock towards any other team that i'm going to name you know the dallas cowboys um heck the cincinnati Bengals. what you're kind of seeing with t higgins they could be like yeah you know what 
we could afford to kind of have you be in a little disgruntled. Like we, we, we don't need every little thing to go our way to make everything perfect. In fact, we, we were kind of a little bit more desperate for your greatness. So we'll be willing to kind of deal with some of the issues that you bring for this final season. But otherwise, you know, we, we can let this play out. I don't think the 49ers have that ability because when you're trying to win a Super Bowl, your margin of error is really, really small. It's really, really small. We know that. It's, it's always small. And so they, they can't have that. Believe, believe me, Debo doesn't want this. Kittle doesn't want this. Shanahan doesn't want this. Christian McCaffrey doesn't want this. Nobody wants that. You don't, it becomes locker room poison. That's leverage. It really, really is. So even though they don't want to trade him or move on from him, if he's not going to play ball and he's going to be difficult, I mean, I just, I can't imagine the way how this is all unfolded, that if Ayuk is forced to play for the 49ers, that he's going to just be that great teammate doing everything that he needs to do, sacrificing for the, you know, for the win, for the championship, all about the team. He won't buy in. And that's a problem. It, that becomes very difficult. You start to undercut your quarterback, your other teammates, your coach. It just gets ugly quickly. We've, we've seen this so many times. We've seen this again and again and again and again and again. So this, this isn't new. So that's why it could end up being better for the 49ers to say, all right, let's move on. Let's, let's trade him. Obviously, we really want him for another year because we are a better team with him right now. But like Booger was saying, he sees the writing on the wall. They only want him for this final year because they'll be able to maximize their Super Bowl potential. And then they're going to let him walk. And he's just like, well, I don't want to do that. Pay me now. And so it just, it just, it just has the potential to get uglier and uglier. I think one of the better, one of uh, another great example of this was kind of what happened. I know it's a different sport, but it was with basketball with Ben Simmons or with James Harden, right? We see this all the time with those players. Like they'll continue to play and be around, be around the team but they are clearly detrimental overall to the team. Now, in basketball, one player, especially the players of those of that level, they impact the team more greatly. But like I said, the margin of error, the 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 ability to withstand some of these issues when when your goal is to win a Super Bowl, you just can't have this. So it might truly be in the 49ers' best interest to officially move on from Ayuk if he's going to continue to be very difficult. If he's going to be this type of guy who's playing this season and he's like, oh, I got back tightness. But I got back tightness, knee soreness. They, these guys do that stuff all the time. All the time. It's not hard. So it's just, you know, if you're a 49ers fan, I, I wonder, like, what do you want? I know it's very easy to say, well, he has to play. Again, it's not Madden. Like Travis O'Shea always says, it's, it's not Madden. You can't just... Force these guys to do whatever you want. That's not the way it works. These are people with personalities, with dreams and aspirations and goals. So it's just not that easy. Because uh, that's what I keep seeing a lot of people in the comments. Well, he has to play. He doesn't have a choice. Guys, there's always a choice. And these we've seen these players make a choice all the time. So it's, it's really going to be interesting to see how this unfolds. If they actually do reach an agreement and he does get paid in a way that he wants to. Or if he forces himself out and he trades or they don't make a deal and he still plays. It's just so hard for me to imagine that they are going to go into this season with no deal and he's going to play and there's just going to be no issues. I just, I just so, I just can't see that. I really, really can't. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? Do you think uh, Brandon Ayuk will actually get a trade? will actually be traded from the 49ers uh where do you think he would go do you think the 49ers are going to sign him or just force him to play that uh this coming year let me know in the comments below i read every single comment so whether you agree with me or disagree with me either way let's get in some discussions let's get in some fights but ultimately let's just have some fun and please do consider subscribing we are building an amazing community here and i would absolutely love to see you part of it i want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to something that we're really excited to be part of and I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.